Good morning. Great to see you all this morning. Uh, just a few brief announcements before we begin. Uh, please remember that on May 8th, that's a Wednesday, we're having a Mission Central rally here at Martini, and we're still looking for donations of cookies and other fun things to snack on for that evening. Um, please remember also that we're always accepting donations for the food bank, so if you have food donations for that, that's always welcome. Next Sunday, a couple of unique things going on. Next Sunday, the Reverend Dr. Peter Scare from the seminary will be joining us as a guest preacher. He's a great preacher. You'll love him. Um, and then immediately following the service, we'll have our quarterly voters meeting next Sunday in the fellowship hall. So make plans to join us for that. <clears throat> this Wednesday night, we're kind of fully back to our normal Wednesday evening schedule. We'll have confirmation at 4.30. And then um, Bible study on the book of James at 6.30. We had a nice turnout for that on Wednesday. It was an enjoyable night, so join us for that if you're able to. 45 minutes in the book of James. And then one note about the service today. We um, had a slight oversight. We will sing This is the Feast instead of the Gloria in Excelsis as listed in the bulletin. So when we get to that section, we'll sing This is the Feast. I believe that's all the announcements I have for this morning, so we prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Having heard of the forgiveness of Christ, given to us, we share that peace with one another.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first reading for the third Sunday of Easter is from Acts chapter 3. While the lame man who was now healed clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's, astounded. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people, Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, 
the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate, when he had decided to release him. But you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked for a murderer to be granted to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all the things about which God spoke by the mouth of his prophets long ago. This is the word of the Lord. Answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You have given me relief when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. But know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. You have put more joy in my heart than they have when their grain and wine abound. The epistle is from 1 John, chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. Now one who abides in him keeps on, no one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened 
and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in, in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. In the holy name of Jesus. Amen. 
For writers, it might be to write the next great American novel. For musicians, it's their symphony or their requiem. For politicians, it's the presidency. And for Olympians, it's the world record. Maybe for you, it's a stable retirement or a reunited family or prominence in the workplace. Whatever it is, every one of us has life goals, aspirations that define us, that give us meaning, that drive us to be the best version of ourselves. But today, Jesus asks us to think just a little bit bigger than that. He does not define our individual life goals for us, though he certainly cares for us each as individuals. No, today Jesus goes further. He sets forth a goal for you and for me and for all people who have ever lived. A universal goal around which all of creation orbits. Jesus' goal is that you would be found in him. That you would experience his divine life completely, full blast, wholeheartedly. Truly, Jesus' goal for you is to connect you to his suffering and resurrection. After Jesus' resurrection, the disciples are shocked. They are together talking about things, wonderful things, things they had just heard from their companions on the road to Emmaus. There, Jesus had appeared to two of his disciples. He had opened their minds to understand the scriptures and then revealed who he was in the breaking of the bread. So yes, there was a lot to discuss. And as they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. This was something the disciples had never seen before. Jesus, risen from the Or so they thought. But Jesus will take the time to clear things up for them. Just as he did on the Emmaus Road, Jesus sits his disciples down for some catechism time. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. It turns out that all scripture testifies to Jesus. In the books of Moses, Jesus is the ram sacrificed for Isaac and the greater Joseph who was sold by his own into slavery. Jesus is the new Moses, who not only gives the law, but fulfills it. In the prophets, Jesus is there too. He is the suffering servant in Isaiah, who had no form or majesty that we should look at him. He is the one Job saw when he proclaimed, I know that my Redeemer lives. Even the Psalms are about Jesus. They are prayers spoken by him. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? They are prayers spoken about him. The Lord is my shepherd. Or, who is the king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. All these scriptures were fulfilled when Christ died and rose again. And it turns out that the goal of the scriptures is the suffering 
and resurrection of Jesus. And when Jesus opens our minds and gives us his Holy Spirit, we can see him in every word of the Bible. And after Jesus opens their minds, he teaches his disciples. The Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations. Here, Jesus describes his church. The gathering of Christians from all times and places who hold fast to his word, confess their sins, and receive their risen Lord in, with, and under bread and wine. It is here in Jesus' church that we are taught his word. Here he opens the scriptures for us, that we would learn to see him in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. It is here in Jesus' church that we hear the preaching of repentance and forgiveness. Very few places in our world will tell us how bad it really is with us. It's not a popular viewpoint shared by many teachers, life coaches, or worldly wise men. But here, Jesus will tell us the truth. And his truth leads us to repent of our sins, that we might be forgiven and share that forgiveness with each other. It is here in Jesus' church that we are invited to touch him as he comes to us from lectern and pulpit, font and altar. The real Jesus, the incarnate Christ, the one who proves his resurrection by eating a piece of fish in front of his followers. This one touches us every time we celebrate his holy supper. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as we see that he has. And everything in this holy house is put here by Christ himself that, you, that he might touch you with his grace and forgiveness. That you might have a part in his suffering and thereby have a share in his resurrection. Because the goal of the church is the suffering and resurrection of Jesus. And as you know, Jesus' work is not for you alone. Just as it was necessary that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise, so it is necessary that this gospel should be proclaimed to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. Just as the disciples had been connected to Jesus' suffering and resurrection, so our Lord desires all to be connected to that reality. And so the disciples become his witnesses. They are not to follow cleverly devised myths when they share this gospel. Instead, they are to preach what they have seen and heard. Because this mission is God's work and not theirs. And so it is. The mission has spread the world over. It began in Jerusalem. It has endured wars and rumors of wars. It has outlived martyrdoms and stonings and hatred and politics and policies. The apostles appointed presbyters and bishops in all the cities, and the churches grew and they spread, first throughout Rome, then throughout Europe, and finally to the Americas. And by God's grace, this mission has come to us today in New Haven, Indiana, at Martini Lutheran Church. And this mission continues. It continues through the work of parents and children, spouses, siblings, pastors, teachers, 
police officers, accountants, farmers, daycare workers, and even you. But make no mistake, this mission is not your mission. This mission belongs to Jesus, and he will see it through. But in his grace, he makes us his witnesses. He connects us to his suffering and resurrection, and he invites us to let that reality have its way with us. Because the goal of the church's mission is the suffering and resurrection of Jesus. In the end, the suffering and resurrection of Jesus is the goal of everything. And when Jesus connects you to his suffering and resurrection through water, word, and supper, all your other goals come along for the ride. So there's no need to fret about your retirement. Jesus has a 401k the world cannot match. And if you feel the anxieties of a broken family, you can rest assured that you are a member of the body of Christ. And don't worry too much about establishing yourself in the eyes of the world, because the very Son of God has taken on flesh for you. Because Jesus' goal is that you would find your life in him and experience his divine life wholeheartedly, full blast, and forever. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to rise as we confess together our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe We invite the deacon to come forward with the offering. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, in your presence we find fullness of joy, and by your right hand, Christ Jesus, we win and deliver peace. You win and deliver peace forevermore. In the midst of this world's sins and sorrows, give us peace in the knowledge of his salvation and confident hope in the resurrection of the dead. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, by the incarnation of your Son and the reconciliation of his cross, you have made us your children and gathered us into your holy church. Sustain the preaching of your holy word and its message of repentance for the forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name among us and all the nations of the world. We pray especially for the ministry of Jean Carlos Ramirez and his family. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks and praise, O God, 
that you have led the Reverend Kyle Brown to accept the call to serve us as our next pastor. Be with him and his family in the days of head as they prepare to relocate and bless Grace Lutheran in Hobbs, New Mexico, and our Savior Lutheran in Lovington, New Mexico, as they seek out a faithful pastor to serve them. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, shepherd and guardian of our souls, we thank you for the faithful service of Daniel Gibson as teacher at Central Lutheran School. We ask that you grant him and his family wisdom, courage, and faith to carry on this blessed work among the students in Nebraska. Lord, in your mercy. Give peace, Lord, to our homes and enliven them by Christ's resurrected life, especially the homes of the Turner, Ullery, and Vault families. Let the forgiveness of sins reign among husbands and wives, parents and children. Assure those who live alone that they too are your children, upheld by your right hand. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, preserve our nation and its leaders, especially Joseph, our president, and Eric, our governor. Watch over those in our armed forces, especially Peyton and Olivia LaFriends and Faith Poor, that you might preserve order and decency in this fallen world by their hands and restrain the sins and deceptions of the lawless, that we may practice righteousness while awaiting the eternal peace promised in Christ's wounds alone. Lord, in your mercy. God of all comfort, you have compassion on those who are afflicted. Remember and have mercy on Marky Eichmann, Steve Fenton, Randy LaFriends, Mary Peters, Sue Ranking, and all those in need of your healing and deliverance. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace.